Okay, this should be quite a short one, um, although I think in your books it's not quite clear, so I want to um, clarify on this. So this detoxification of alcohol, which again is another process of the liver. Um, so when we're talking here about alcohol, remember alcohol is a generic name for a group of chemicals. Uh, what we're really discussing here is ethanol, which is one of the, this group. The formula for that is um, CH3, uh, CH2. OH, there's a methyl group, we could write it as C2H5OH like that. Remember we usually put um, the, the, the functional group, the OH, that's the bit that makes this an alcohol at the end just so it's easy to, to um, look at. But that's, that's what it actually is, that's what we're talking about. There are other alcohols, or other chemicals um, called alcohols, but that's what the one that we're thinking of. Chemically we're talking about ethanol. Now although this is, um, as a drug, it's got a depressant effect on the nervous system, um, there's lots of energy in here. It's not too dissimilar, you know. If you think of um, the trioses and things and pyruvate, similar kind of um, makeup of, of, of chemicals in here. Lots of hydrogen. So there's a lot of potential energy in here if we can release it. Um, so we, we've got two things going on really here that we need to get rid of the the toxic effects of the alcohol drug, but we don't want to simply break the whole thing down and lose it because potentially we've got um, quite a lot of energy locked up in here. So, if we start off with um, ethanol, and I'll put these um, chemicals in here as we go, so CH3, CH2, OH. Um, the first step is converting that to ethanol. I'll go with an A. Now, depending on what you look at, and if you do chemistry, you might be a bit more comfortable with that. This has also got another common name, um, which is acetaldehyde, if I get it right, acetaldehyde. I'll write it out. So as you're looking it up, acetaldehyde. Oops. Aldi. There we go. Give my spelling. Acetaldehyde. Okay. So if you're looking this up, it might be under, um, might be spelled um, this rather than ethanol. Ethanol is well we can work this out what we do here is we um, we oxidize this molecule we remove hydrogens from it NAD to reduced NAD remember each reduced NAD is two hydrogens that we've taken off so if we remove two hydrogens from this it's CH3 C O H okay that's what ethanol is as a molecule I think in your books it actually shows you it, this sort of hydrogen coming off down here, which I think is, is perhaps a confusing bit. Ethanol is oxidised down to ethanol. Now, the enzyme that does this is called either alcohol or ethanol dehydrogenase. Now, just to be a little bit confusing, it seems pretty straightforward here. Dehydrogenase, removing hydrogen. You also get um, another enzyme called ethanol dehydrogenase, or alcohol dehydrogenase, which is very, very similar, um, which is found in yeast. But of course, it actually does the opposite. The reaction goes the other way. It's a slightly different form of it. Um, if you remember in anaerobic respiration yeast or in fermentation, uh, we get pyruvate going to ethanol going to ethanol. And you find the same, apparently the same named enzyme here, which is, seems to be doing two different things. Uh, and it causes confusion because sometimes people think the dehydrogenase, it must be removing hydrogen. Uh, but in yeast, the reaction is going the other way, even though it's a very similar um, enzyme. It, it's, it's a more complex, uh, sorry, a larger structure in yeast, I should say. Anyway, in terms of the liver, um, so that this, oh, I should actually mention, this is happening in the hepatocytes, the liver cells. That's where it's all going on. That's where it's happening. We've oxidised ethanol down to ethanol. We then oxidise it again into ethanoic acid. Again, we have two hydrogens uh, removed. Now, there's a problem here in that you might go, oh, so ethanoic acid must be just that minus two hydrogens. It, it isn't. So I'm, I'm not going to put in all these other extra reactions here, um, but let's let's not worry too much about 
what's going on. We don't need to know if, if you want to look it up, you can. Um, you'll also find this is sometimes referred to as acetic acid. Um, if you're familiar with vinegar, that's also the acidic component of vinegar. Um, and yeah, it, you know, it's present in our bodies here, but just in case you... Pulling sponge, in, in case you're looking these things up and you can't find them, it's because they have chemical names, if you like, and, and sometimes more common names, so that's what they are. But both steps, removal of um, hydrogens, so we're getting our nice reduced NAD, which of course can then go into um, respiratory processes. This finally is uh, converted to our old friend acetyl coenzyme A, of course from the link reaction Krebs cycle, and then this goes in, feeds into Krebs cycle and goes through all the stages it would have done before. So that's how we get our um, energy released from it. One last point on this, all this um, NAD that's been used up, if you have lots and lots of alcohol in your system, of course you're going to need plenty of NAD to uh, oxidize it, uh, sorry, to, to accept the hydrogens um, in this detoxification process. However, NAD is also needed um, in oxidation of fatty acids. And the problem is, if all the NAD is going into this uh, detoxification uh, process, because there's so much alcohol in there, you no longer break down the fatty acids, and they get converted back um, into lipids, and those lipids are stored in the liver, um, in, inside these hepatocytes. As a result, the liver cells becoming more and more full of um, lipids, fats, and the liver becomes fatty, which is um, cause all kinds of problems, things like hepatitis and cirrhosis. I'll write that one down. That's a, a useful one. Uh, so, yeah. so <coughs> excuse me. Too much alcohol in, in alcoholics, all the NAD has been used to detoxify, none left for this um, breaking down the fatty acids, end up being stored as lipids.